Hello guys, welcome to my channel Swati Farmagnan, Sharing Knowledge. Today's topic is Structures and its uses of few cephalosporins. For the introduction of cephalosporins and the classification of cephalosporins, you can check my previous video. The first structure we are going to see is cephalexin, which is a first generation cephalosporin. This is a structure of cephalexin. It contains cepharm group. The, uh, as you know the general structure of cephalosporins first position second position third position at third position there is a methyl group fourth position there is a COOH group this particular structure which is a beta lactam ring fused with a thiazine ring is called as cepam group that's why the name as cephalosporins at this position there is a amide group to this amide group there is a r group so to this r group uh, in the place of r group there is a phenyl ring phenyl ring is attached to methyl amine group methyl amine group this is the structure of cephalexin this cephalexin uses or cephalexin is a first generation cephalosporin as we know that first generation and second generation cephalosporins will be particularly used on gram positive bacteria they will not be used for gram negative bacterial infections so this is used to, to treat infections which are caused by gram positive bacteria it is also used to treat upper respiratory tract infections ear infections skin infections urinary tract infections and bone infections the next structure is cephadroxyl cephadroxyl contains cepham group to this cepham group at third position there is a methyl group in place of r and at fourth position there is a carboxylic acid group which is common in general structure and at this position there is a amide group to this amide group which is to this amide group there is a phenol group which is attached to this phenol group at para position at para position there is a methyl amine group this is first generation cephalosporin which is used to treat various bacterial infections and it is also used to treat infections which are caused in throat skin and urinary tract it, this cephadroxyl is also used to treat gram positive bacterial infection this cephadroxyl will be available in the form of capsules next structure is cefixim 90 percent of the patients can have been used this cefixim which is a third generation cephalosporin and this cephalos this uh, cefixim will be available in the capsules form the uh, structure of this uh, cephalosporin is the general structure same that is cepham is present and at third position there is a ch double bond ch2 allyl group is present and at fourth position there is a carboxylic acid group here after the amide group there is a uh, side chain which contains thiazole ring to this thiazole ring at second position there is a amino group and here between the amide group and thiazole uh, thiazole amine group thiazole amine group at uh, there is a bridge it contains acetic acid side chain nitro acetic acid side chain is present here at this position this cefixim is a third generation cephalosporin it is effective against gram positive bacteria and also gram negative bacterial infection as i already uh, told you that uh, the first generation and second generation will act only on positive uh, gram positive bacterial infections the third generation will act on both gram positive and gram negative bacterial infections this cefixim is one of the effective drug which will act on gram negative bacterial infections also this cefixim is a resistant towards beta lactam Lactamase enzyme. As beta lactamase enzyme will be produced by few bacteria, that will affect the that will uh, break the ring, sepam ring or beta lactam ring or pinam ring, used to treat typhoid fever and biliary tract infections also. Next structure is cefapirin. Cefapirin is also called as cefapiridin. In the name itself, we can understand that there is a pyridine structure in this uh, structure of cefapirin. This third position, there is CH2O. CO CH3 group is present. Acetyl side chain is present. Aceto acetyl side chain is present. COOH group is as usual at fourth position. CH2OH, CH2S group, and here pyridine ring is attached. Cephapirin is a first generation cephalosporin. This cephapirin will be combined with prednisolone. Actually, the prednisolone is a steroidal hormone. This will be used in cattle for 
maintaining intra mammary glands and its production of milk for excessive production of the milk in cattle we are using this cefafirin and it is also combined with prednisolone which is a steroidal hormone so that intra mammary glands will be uh, the mammary glands will be the size of the mammary glands will be increased and they can maintain this mammary glands. Cefapirin also acts as a intrauterine preparation in cattle. For uh, intrauterine preparation also cefapirin will be used. Cefapirin has been uh, banned for usage on human beings because it will lead to hormonal uh, damage or hormonal imbalance in the human beings. Cefuroxim. Here we have one clue. To remember the structure that is furo. Furo indicates furon group is present at this side chain. So, sepam group is as usual and here CH2O, CO, NH2 group is the side chain which is present at third position and at this position there is a amide group. This amide group is present to C, C double bond N cyanide group and OCH3 is present methoxy group which is present to cyanyl group and this group is attached to furon cefuroxim is a second generation cephalosporin and it is also used to treat gram negative bacterial infections cefuroxim is the safest antibiotic which is used during the pregnancy during pregnancy in the pregnant women if any bacterial infections occur then they can use this uh, cefuroxim which is the safest antibiotic it is also used to treat tonsillitis, inflammation of the tonsils, laryngitis, inflammation of the larynx, bronchitis, infection of bronchioles and throat infections, pneumonia, gonorrhea, urinary tract infections which are caused by various susceptible bacteria. Cefiroxim is available in the form of tablets. We will see the mechanism of action of cephalosporins. Cephalosporins like Penicillins, they will also interfere with the synthesis of bacterial cell wall because the cell wall contains uh, is composed of peptidoglycan layer. This peptidoglycan layer uh, consists of two amino sugars. The two amino sugars names are N-acetyl muramic acid, we can call it as NAM. N-acetyl glucosamine, we can call it as NAG. Peptidoglycan residues are linked together forming long strands and UDP is a split off. When the cleavage, then the cleavage of terminal D alanine of the peptide occurs by transpeptidase enzyme. Then the process of transpeptidation completes. The cross bridging occurs by this transpeptidation process by using the enzyme transpeptidase enzyme. This cross bridging of the peptidoglycan residues will give necessary strength to the bacterial cell wall. This beta lactam antibiotics, uh, beta lactam antibiotics nothing but penicillins and uh, cephalosporins, they will inhibit this transpeptidase enzyme. When the transpeptidase enzyme is inhibited, transpeptidation process will not take place so that cross linking does not take place. This will lead to formation of cell wall deficient bacteria. The bacteria will get formed but cell wall will not be formed perfectly. That will lead to shrinkage of the bacterial cell wall because it will disturb the inflow and outflow of the various ions. So cephalosporins will show the bactericidal action. You can see here cytoplasm is present. Cytoplasmic membrane is present by this NAM and NOG along with the D-alanine a peptide linkages by using the transpeptidase enzyme the transpeptidation process will get complete and the bacterial cell wall will get formed when the cephalosporins will inhibit this transpeptidase enzyme transpeptidation process will not take place so that cross linking of the peptidoglycan residues will not take place so that will lead to the uh, that will lead to the shrinkage of the bacterial cell and that uh, that will lead to the cell wall deficient bacteria and that it will cause shrinkage of the bacterial cell. Finally, it will show the bactericidal action means it will kill the bacteria so that bacterial infection can be reduced. What are the various side effects and toxic effects when we will use cephalosporins in long term? 
the side effects are pain will be there and inflammation will be there and inject at injection site if we are using injection form of cephalosporin some pain and inflammation will be there at injection site which is a common side effect next is diarrhea if next hypersensitivity reactions can be observed nephrotoxicity occurs if the patients are using continuously cephalosporin the uh, nephrotoxic drugs or uh, non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs diuretics antibiotics and ace inhibitors all these drugs will cause nephrotoxicity neutropenia and thrombocytopenia will occur normal blood cells will be like this neutrophils uh, neutropenia includes the neutrophils less number of neutrophils will be seen uh, that that is nothing but neutropenia and thrombocytopenia as platelet count also less particular patient who is using continuously cephalosporins bleeding can be seen pain on intramuscular injection example cephalothin only this drug cephalothin cephalosporin when injected intramuscularly then the pain will be there in the injection site nausea and vomiting is common colitis inflammation of colon is also one of the side effect which can be observed in the patients who are using cephalosporins disulfiram like effects also observed in few patients this is about cephalosporin structure and uses mechanism of action and side effects and toxicity we'll see about beta lactamase inhibitors in my next video thank you